uh, we cannot survive in this world uh, alone. Uh, we, need, we need company and wildlife is company for us as well. Well, you know, the, the tropical rainforest is not like any other rainforest. Yeah? Uh, tropical rainforest is very dense. Ten feet from you, you don't know what is in front of you. It is that thick and that dense. So it is a challenge uh, for us to actually patrol this forest. And the only way we can bring about uh, increase in uh, wildlife population is by having more patrols in the forest on a continuous 365 days. At least uh, we should have uh, 2,000 people. Uh, to start going around the jungles in different areas. At present, we don't have, I have only about 150 of them. So for this, actually, we need a lot of money. We have to pay allowances for people who go into the forest and do the, do the patrol, apart from their monthly salaries. Or oh, it will come, come to about 20 to 30 million ringgit per year. And at the moment, that budget is not, does not exist? No, it does not exist, no. The police are now coming in in a big way. The police is going to give us one whole regiment in order to have people on the ground. These are really hardcore criminals. They know the terrain, they have done this before. Uh, and the wildlife in their country is no more because of what they have done. Now they are coming into our country in order to chase after our wildlife. Because there's a market. That's the demand. People are willing to pay certain exorbitant prices for these animal parts. So they take the risk of coming in with uh, visit visas and then they disappear in a forest for four to five months. They collect whatever they can and then they try and leave. The demand is coming from Hong Kong and China and Vietnam, these three countries. For all animal parts, just not for penguin scales, uh, for tiger parts, uh, bear parts, uh, and you name it. Today, there are hundreds and hundreds of groups out there. People looking, buying, selling. Any uh, electronic platform to buy and sell, uh, wildlife is being bought and sold on those. Wildlife trade and wildlife sale is an ongoing process in the internet. You cannot stop it, but we are monitoring it now. For these, uh, traders are quite open. And... Oh, they're very brave. But why, why can't people just put a stop to it? What, what could be challenged in that? How do, how do you want us to stop uh, the trade? I don't think we have the power to do that. If I advertise something on the, on the, in, the in the internet, uh, but there is no further uh, business sale or there's no other things I've done, it's just an advertisement on the, on the internet. So how do you stop that? So you, you have to catch a person uh, at it, that is, uh, if is his, the, the goods are exchanging hands and money is being paid for, uh, for that, and then, yes, then the law uh, will, will come into force to, to take action against the people who have done this. We have a unit now set up in our wildlife department. We call it cyber crimes, where people are monitoring the wildlife species or parts that's being sold freely uh, online. And we are also uh, setting up stings and uh, we have made some successful uh, ventures into this. Uh, and uh, the department is new, but uh, they are working hand in hand with the police as well in order to make sure that we will help uh, curb this. We have increased surveillance in our ports after we confiscated about six tons of uh, pangolin scales recently, which we have destroyed publicly. Recently, there was also uh, pangolin scales that were picked up in Singapore uh, and uh, also off uh, the shores of Malaysia. We understand that it's not easy uh, to identify transit shipment uh, goods. So what we've done is that we are now working with the American Embassy uh, who, who's helping us uh, train uh, canines who will smell not only pangolin uh, scales but also other animal uh, parts or even live animals for the matter in the containers. The uh, cabinet has approved uh, nearly about 1 billion ringgit in spending uh, in purchasing uh, uh, this special uh, x-ray uh, to be placed in about 52 areas in Malaysia in ports. Uh, so that uh, you can now scan a whole, uh, whole container and know what is inside it. And we are going to amend our local laws uh, in the coming December sitting of Parliament. Uh, 
I'm setting a very high deterrent. If you're caught, uh, you are most probably fined up to a million ringgit, depending on what you have on your hands. You can go to prison for as long as 20 or 25 years. And the fine is huge. If you don't pay the fine, you'll add on to more time. You are going to be punished severely if, you, if you're caught. Education. I find that uh, Malaysians are not well aware about their wildlife, flora, fauna and biodiversity. I think uh, this has to be included in the curriculum as well. How, how we could live and share what we have with the wildlife in, in, in this country. Malaysia is uh, known as a mega diverse country in terms of biodiversity. Uh, there are 13 of them in the world and Malaysia is one of them. We, uh, and this is something that we must preserve. So we must pay attention to the wildlife in this country because it is part of us. That this country has given us a lot, so much so that we should be able to play our part in order to preserve them as well. Mm -hmm.